and uh, invite me for the talk. So I'm going to talk about uh, the cell line ontology and uh, how we can uh, in, how we can like uh, improve it. So first of all, I want to introduce a uh, uh, little bit of background. So the cell line ontology is an open library ontology in the domain of uh, cell line cells. So we have originally uh, had many uh, parties uh, getting uh, together uh, because of before it, uh, just uh, different groups working individually. So we joined forces and then we published the paper uh, 2014. And then uh, later on, uh, we still have a lot of activities going on. And this is what I'm going to talk today. And so far we have uh, over 40,000 cell lines uh, covering all kinds of uh, things. Uh, for each cell line, we have a cell type disease, uh, atomic entity, taxonomy. We have uh, all kinds of things uh, going on. So um, I want to say um, initially uh, we use ATCC and uh, hyper uh, CLDD and the uh, CORREL. Uh, Institute source. And then later on, we have with the uh, uh, Japan Rikon resources. We have been working with many uh, uh, parties like uh, EBI, like uh, OBI, uh, and, uh, and uh, Japan. And, and then we have this one. And then I will focus today on how we first developed after the, the paper publication. So I will talk about the Linux project and uh, we're working with uh, with uh, a Ch Chinese uh, centralized uh, cell line group, and then working with the EBI, and then the stem cell group as a, as an example. So basically, uh, cell line ontology is purely based on design. We have because over forty thousand cell lines, we have to have some high level design in order to group everything together. So this is an example. Like for example, we have some HeLa cell. Uh, this is a HeLa cell line cell. So it, it derives from an epithelial cell or from the ut uh, uterine cervicus of a, a human, right? Like uh, we, we all know the uh, the, the patient, uh, and it's a lot of story behind. And the, the and the person has a disease of adenal carcinoma. So this is kind of very complicated, right? And then we are also trying to make a shortcut to make it more useful for different queries. And then uh, it's being widely used, like uh, links I'm going to talk soon, like uh, several stories, uh, cable, Wikipedia, so uh, a lot of them citing uh, cell line ontology IDs uh, for the cross-linking. So then, uh, the problem we want to discuss is like uh, now we are with uh, all the more uh, information coming, how we can you know, update, synchronize everything. So one example is uh, the link, the library of network based uh, cellular signatures. It's a very famous uh, program. And uh, we were fortunately got a two year funding to help uh, with links. So we are trying to use the cellular ontology to support the Linux uh, data integration. So basically, uh, Linux has over a thousand cell lines commonly used. And then uh, really the, the, each cell line can be from different places. So uh, what do we do is, uh, so our methods uh, is like a, more like a identifying the link cell lines, right? And then we're trying to link to the cell line ontology terms. But sometimes you don't, you don't have the terms directly linkable then we have to generate a new one. And then we look for all the resources like uh, Kendall ID, like uh, different IDs, and we're trying to give uh, the best uh, possible annotation. And then uh, uh, the Linux people can use it. But uh, let's see, the cell ontology is very big, right? So more than 40,000. So then the Linux people they don't want to look for all of them. So we basically generate a view, right? Like. Uh, uh, link uh, cell ontology view. So the view is just a subset of cell ontology. So it includes all the information uh, from the cell ontology, but I maintain some structure. So much easier for for user to use. We think uh, this one is a good way to update and, and use uh, the information for the whole community. 
So yeah, definitely different applications. So one example, I would say, okay, let's say if we are looking for uh, some uh, cervical carcinoma, like all the cell lines coming from cervical carcinoma background. Then if you look only for the cervical carcinoma, you only have eight cell lines, right? But however, you know, like uh, here, cervical adenocarcinoma is a cervical carcinoma, and cervical clear cell adenocarcinoma is also. So you can look for the subclasses, right? Then you can suddenly find more, more cell lines that can meet your need. And then similarly, you can you know, use the same query to query based on tissue, organ, or, or cell line type. So you can find uh, a lot of applications that uh, the, the, our cell ontology links with you uh, for, for, the, for their studies. Okay, so I will just quickly go for another example. So we have worked with uh, uh, the China National Infrastructure of Cell Line uh, Resource. It's a, so it's more like a ATCC uh, in China. So I happened to the kind of a couple, couple of months of sabbatical there. So they, they, they knew my presence. So we built up some collaboration. So basically one challenge is the, the bilingual right? So we, we basically uh, have a way to present uh, the work. We don't generate a new ID, but we can generate some the Chinese uh, kind of annotation, so the language is in China, Chinese. So this one works out fine, but definitely later on we found uh, you know, when you have all Chinese and English mixed, so like uh, in, in the query, it, like uh, uh, on B or some other, Visualization sometimes it causes some problem, so that's another thing. Uh, so there are a lot of terms over over twenty thousand, ten over two hundred uh, seven, two thousand twenty seven hundred cell lines are included in the ontology, and we also have some new design. Uh, I don't have time to present, and then I want to introduce the stem cell. So originally our 2014 version, we don't have a stem cell lines included as a, in the cell line ontology because uh, we were afraid that by definition it's not a stem cell, it's not a stem, it's not a cell line. So the, the cell line definition is it's a stable and a homogeneous population of cells with a common feature. So it's a cell level. Then we discussed a lot, right? Uh, over a couple of years, so later on we, we agree the whole community or to the developers agree a stem cell line cell, it's still a, a, a classified as a stem cell line cell, a, a cell line cell because it does have the, the features, you know, given condition. But of course, you know, given different conditions, they can differentiate, right? Or they can self-renew. But anyway, so in, in nature, yeah, we can we can agree on a stem cell line cell is a it's a cell line cell. So this is a bigger step with this one figure out that then we can add a lot of uh, stem cell line cells into cell ontology. So we have been working with the human pluripotent stem cell uh, registry uh, from uh, Germany uh, uh, with, Stephen, uh, with Stephanie working on the project. So by doing so, we were able to incorporate a lot of cells. So, and then later on, we also worked on more like an extended uh, work, right? To extending cell line ontology. So we call it ontology for stem cell investigation. So we had some workshops there, we put up this story. So I think it's another extension or, or like a synchronization effort. Uh, so uh, I don't want to give more, much, uh, too much detail here because of the timing. So, but uh, anyway, in here, the focus is really the, the investigation. So we, uh, I think uh, many terms we didn't put it into cell ontology, but it does use cell ontology in, in, in cell type ontology. So this is another effort. Uh, lastly, I want to say there is uh, the EFO. So uh, experimental factor ontology, uh, originally we work on EFO, is the EFO for the cell ontology development. But later on, we, we found still a lot of cell lines uh, defined in the UFO uh, is, are not in, inside the uh, cell ontology. So there are some conflicts actually, or some definition or, or hierarchy definition. 
So uh, basically, then we, we work with them. So we even have a student, uh, Edison, uh, he, you know, he did a summer intern in EBI, right, to, with a focus uh, work on this one. So with the, the whole um, goal, whole aim is to try to identify the differences between the EFO and the cell ontology and, and then trying to resolve the differences. So definitely you can see, you know, like uh, for the synchronization, updating, opening is, is a big effort. And then uh, I want to uh, summarize the, uh, the work. So basically we have uh, improved a lot on the cell line ontology development. And uh, we worked uh, with the, the links and uh, to support uh, more like the links as a community. And uh, we worked with EB, EBI, the experimental factor ontology. And uh, we tried to figure out some comparison. We, we, we resolved some uh, uh, redundancy, but the still it, this work actually has not been finished yet. And then we worked with the Chinese CLI resource and incorporated uh, over 2,700 uh, uh, 2700 uh, cell lines from them. Uh, majority of them actually are, are, are the same as uh, uh, other currents in, in, in cell ontology already. Uh, some are new uh, from them. And then we worked on the stem cell line cells, and then we also uh, worked with cell type ontology and other community developed something called the ontology for stem cell investigation. So you can see uh, it's really a lot of effort uh, we're trying to build up. And of course, then when the, when the ontology becomes bigger and bigger, you, you can find a lot of difficulties, uh, like uh, alignment, like uh, uh, reasoning. Sometimes if you have an issue because uh, uh, different uh, uh, certain open combined together, we have to figure out. But uh, also new terms are coming. So we have been working with the, the Oncola Bridge, the group that uh, was presented earlier, right? Yeah, I think it's very good experience of uh, trying to figure out and uh, trying to use the, the resource to help our ontology development. And we feel like a GitHub, uh, web topology, on the animal tools, and on the uh, on the bee and the robot, what are tools they can help us a lot in the ontology development. And then we do find some like uh, difficulties, uh, some issues like, uh, uh, the EFO and the cell ontology, they are mapped, but they're not integrated. Duplications occur and how we can how we can solve it, right? So basically we agree to use cell ontology IDs as default. So uh, you know, for existing EFO IDs, but still there are a lot of mapping, a lot of configuration going on. And then uh, like a language display. <laughs> so you, you know, so it uh, seems like there's a, there is a suggestion we don't have to display Chinese uh, in the current version in the English dominating uh, 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 field, at least in the West in the USA. So I think it's good a suggestion. Um, and then um, and many other things like how to define gene markers for different cell lines. So it's a lot of things going on uh, and it's a lot of work in the future. And of course, we really depend on the design patterns. So every time we want to develop something new, we want to make sure the high level, like a stem cell, the high level definition is good and the design pattern is well placed. So we can go on and add a, a lot, hundreds, thousands, terms there. So, and the data fairness is very important. And uh, we keep updating, assessing, and ensure data fairness. So, it's a, again, it's a very uh, worldwide uh, collaboration among different groups. So, here I just uh, gave a few like uh, the cell type ontology, EBI, Japan, uh, reagent, like OBI, like uh, OVO and the gene ontology, Chris Mongo. So we have many groups and uh, Stephanie is from Germany. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have just a few questions for you, uh, it seems from uh, the chat. Um, and one matches with what I was wondering as well. So. Uh, does CLO capture common or commercially available transgenic cell lines? Um, CFO, I think uh, it covers uh, some some commercial um, transgenic uh, cell lines, 
Uh, however, it uh, may not, uh, this is something we have not done in a systematic way, right? So it's like uh, traditionally you have, you have many, but uh, uh, we have not done in a systematic way. It would be good to like more like the stem cell line uh, repository to work with a team, right? a group, right? welcome any collaboration. So we can we can systematically you know add more things there. Yeah. Um, another question, but I think uh, was partially answered in the chat um, uh, by Azia and Nico. But uh, what primary cell types do you capture in CLO? So we uh, we primary is the immortal immortal cell lines. So usually not a primary, right? Not, not a primary cell lines, but we do include it because of some demands, we include some primary cell lines. Because the majority is immortal uh, cell lines, like killer cell lines, a very typical example. And then now we have thousands of stem cell lines, yeah. Um, and one more question I have for you. Uh, so, how would you annotate in CLO, for instance, uh, mutated cell lines, similar to the transgenic ones? Um, do you go off of whatever one it was a parent of, or uh, is that captured in CLO? Yeah, that's a good question. We actually have included uh, many mutated cell lines. The major issue here is how to logically define the mutation, right? So uh, we, we, we do have a uh, design pattern build up, you know, it's used for uh, for some representative uh, uh, cell lines in, in cell ontology. So it's like, okay, so you have uh, the cell lines, original cell line, right? And then you have some transgenic tool, then you mutate the cell line, and then now there's a new cell line coming out. So to represent, uh, represent the term is relatively easy. To represent the process, actually, is tricky, right? But once you build up the consensus, you can use, if you have the data, you can systematically represent it. So that is uh, built up in a small case, small cases, but uh, we we trying to later on hopefully uh, it's a lot of work to to apply it to more and more uh, cell lines uh, and, and represent those in a very kind of uh, high throughput way. Yeah. Thank you. That that's very helpful. Um, 